Then, what did Jesus say in Matthew 16, 18? I will build my church. And what's the next thing? And the gates of hell or Hades will not prevail against it. Jesus immediately spoke about battle. And that's the next thing we see here also. As soon as he finishes this first vision, the first vision is of the sovereignty of God, Jesus in the midst of this new creation, and saying, and the word of the Father saying, I'm committed to the building of my body. And what's the next thing we see? The enemies. The enemies of the Lord. I lifted up my eyes in a second vision, and he saw four horns. And he said to the angel who was speaking with me, who are, what are these? Remember the horns that Daniel saw, the enemies of God's people, the gates of hell, and four symbolizes from four sides, north, south, east, west. That means the gates of hell, the powers of spiritual death are seeking to crush the building of the body from all sides. And horns speaks of strength. As powers of spiritual wickedness. These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel and Jerusalem. And that teaches us that the powers of spiritual death, the gates of hell, their main work is to scatter God's people or in other words to bring division among God's people. We could paraphrase these words like this. Zechariah asking, what are these four horns? And the Lord saying, these are the powers of spiritual darkness and wickedness that are attacking the church from all four sides with one aim, to bring division, to divide husband and wife, to divide brother and brother, to divide sister and sister. These horns are coming to bring division, to bring separation, to scatter, to separate and when we look at much that is called Christendom today in, the, in our land, we can see what a fantastic work these four horns have accomplished in Christendom. Bringing division, scattering. Turn to Matthew chapter 12. Jesus spoke there about the strong man. Matthew chapter 12. The strong man, he guards his house, it says. Verse 29, how can you enter... Anyone enter the strong man's house and carry off his property unless he first binds the strong man. The strong man is the devil and he's guarding his property. But then Jesus said, you've got to bind the strong man and then you can plunder his house. And in that connection he said in Matthew 12:30, he who is not with me is against me and he who does not gather with me scatters. Notice the same word, scattering, that we saw in Zechariah. The work of the four horns is scattering. Those who are with Jesus, what is their work? Gathering, Matthew 12, 30. There are only two ministries in the church. Gathering and scattering. We can think that there is also a third group of people who do nothing. Who neither gather nor scatter. But Jesus says no. There are only two groups. If you don't gather, verse 30, even if you do nothing... You belong to the other group. That is those who bring division. How do we bring division? You can go to a house and gossip and speak something bad about another brother and thus separate the people in that house from that brother. You have accomplished a ministry of scattering. You have cooperated with the horns in separating God's people. Uh, on the other hand, what about those who visit a house and say nothing? Do nothing. They are also scattering. Jesus said, if you do nothing, you are a scatterer. But if you are with me, you gather. That means you go into a house and you seek to speak good about a brother so that you have brought that brother a little closer to the people in that house. That's the work of gathering. This work of gathering people together. Then we understand what Jesus said in Matthew 18, 20. Those two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst. So this word gathering speaks about unity and scattering speaks about division. And there are only two ministries. We cannot do nothing. That's impossible. If I do nothing, I am a scatterer. The only other ministry that's open to me is gathering. 
to gather. And we see here the four horns are scattering. And the Lord showed me, Zechariah 1.20, four craftsmen. Four craftsmen. Four workmen. And these are the Lord's instruments. And I said, what are these coming to do? And he said, these are the horns which have scattered Judah. Those are the enemies who have come and brought division among God's people. But I have raised up four, not a big number, four overcomers. We can say these craftsmen are the overcomers who have come to terrify these horns and who will throw down the horns of the nations who have lifted up their horns against the land of Judah in order to scatter it. Just think of that. To be an overcomer, what does it say there in the middle of verse 21? An overcomer who has come to terrify Satan. <laughs> what a ministry that is. To terrify Satan. Now, we have heard of believers who are terrified of Satan, but this is quite the opposite. These are people whom the devil is scared of. Just think, brothers and sisters. To be a man and a woman like that in the church whom the devil is scared of because he knows that he cannot touch you with sex, he cannot touch you with money, he cannot touch you with earthly honor, he cannot touch you with selfishness, he cannot touch you with pride. And he's scared of you because you are a workman working on what? Working out your own salvation with fear and trembling from all these wrong attitudes which are in your flesh. Therefore, a workman, a craftsman, a man whom God can pick up and use to terrify Satan, not only to terrify him, but to throw down these powers of darkness. Now in that particular day, I think those four craftsmen were, as we have considered earlier, Zerubbabel and Joshua, and Haggai and Zechariah. Those are the four people at that particular time whom God raised up with different ministries. Haggai, an older prophet, Zechariah, a junior prophet, Zerubbabel, an administrator, and Joshua, the high priest. Four different ministries, but whom God raised up to terrify the enemies and to cast down those horns so that the house could be built. And there is a great need even today for those whom the Lord can find like this, workmen, workmen, not lazy people. Now, when we speak about laziness, most people think about giving out tracts or running around here and there, doing, as they say, something for the Lord. That's not what I'm talking about. We're talking about being diligent to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling so that the devil has no power over us. We read in Second uh, Timothy 2, Paul said to Timothy, 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. He said, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman, as a craftsman, as one of those craftsmen like we read in Zechariah chapter 1. Be diligent that you present yourself to God as one whom God can use, a workman who has no need to be ashamed. That means the devil can't put you to shame. You terrify him. And you've got the word of truth in your hand. What a wonderful ministry this is, brothers and sisters. And I believe that God seeks to raise up such overcomers, even in the church today, to terrify Satan, to drive out his power, the spirit of the Antichrist, from the church, from Christendom. And may you and I be in that number.